hello everyone how are all are you hope you all are doing great so uh, this is shorya from sscid and i welcome you all on the seventh and last day of the, this world space week program hope you all enjoyed this space week with us as we organized various workshops keynotes and competitions of you it was great that you all joined us in the celebrations of this wsw 2020 and we will be announcing the winners for all the competitions today by the end of this session so stay tuned for that and uh, coming up today we have came up with our closing keynote of this space week on into the future indian space ecosystem by mr vishal latha balakumar mission specialist from dhruva space he is currently a space system engineer in dhruva space and he has done his msc in aerospace engineering from delft university of technology and he had also worked with hyundai asram university as system engineer so uh, this hyderabad startup dhruva dhruva space is founded and managed by a group of entrepreneurs who previously worked with companies like exceed space ams ag cisco and kpmg their main vision is to become a leader in space small satellite engineering and offer space infrastructure as a service to power space based applications on earth and beyond and uh, dhruva space has also won this national startups award 2020 in the space category so uh, very congratulations for this and uh, now i welcome mr vishal sir on the screen thank you shaurya thank you for the introduction uh, th thank you sir that you uh, accepted our invitation for this talk and uh, now i will not be taking more much time of you and the screen is, is all yours you can take over absolutely yeah um hi everyone uh, thanks a lot uh, for having me here so uh, a slightly different way of looking at this is we wanted to see what the indian space ecosystem has in uh, the future with respect to what's happening currently in the uh, currently here um so let's take a step back and see what isro has been doing so isro's uh, journey has been uh, extraordinary in terms of Uh, right from building ground systems were early on five six decades ago and then uh, developing multiple uh, missions and uh, serving the needs of the country um, what you can see is we have worked on uh, as isro uh, more than a uh, few hundred missions uh, more than few six three missions in the uh, last five six decades and we have developed multiple launch vehicles and as a country we have achieved quite a lot over the last uh, five six decades but where do we go from here now currently uh, in terms of the portfolio of uh, isro itself uh, we have multiple launch vehicles uh, starting it all started from slvs and aslvs where we are moving towards uh, very huge launch vehicles serving in the geostationary orbits but also the industry is moving towards small satellites and that is uh, something that isro is not leaving behind going towards developing uh, extremely small uh, uh, launch vehicles for uh, small satellite launches now having uh, done this pedigree of a uh, few uh, tens of missions over the last decade and having this wide pedigree of multiple launch satellites uh, the journey of isro in the human space flight program in the last uh, uh, decades uh, has not been uh, has been has been extremely good now when we see the very first foray of the indian uh, human space flight program would be when uh, our astronauts trained with the russian uh, space agencies and then uh we've had uh, our very own uh, cosmonaut uh, dr rakesh sharma who has uh, flown as well now as an incremental program uh, such uh, developments have uh, grown in the country the very first thing that was uh, considered was the cre1 where the capsule recovery experiment was conducted now this is an incremental approach where it's moving towards a crew module atmospheric uh, experiment that was uh, executed a good number of years ago and a pad about test system that was executed as well now uh, the upcoming years are quite exciting as uh, we move towards uh, full fledged unmanned missions in the next uh, year or two which evolves to a uh, the first uh, manned mission from the country itself so starting as a very simple space program now we are moving to a full fledged uh, manned mission so how was this possible uh, a step before that would be just to uh, look at what's been done so this is the crew module atmospheric reentry experiment that was uh, done uh, 
a good number of years ago um and uh, a, a couple of pictures from the abort test as well uh, is right here now it is not just that we have worked purely from an indian perspective where uh, the very first uh, thing as i mentioned uh, when we established the ground segments first that, which is where we started receiving signals from american satellites what you see on the uh, left is one of the first ground seg ground stations that were established in the country through which american tv broadcast signals were received on ground this established towards an extension of ground ground stations across the country which evolved into our first satellite establishment and then our launch vehicles so on and so forth this sort of collaboration didn't stop there uh, this moved on all the way up to as recently as a couple of years ago where we had certain payloads from nasa that flew on the chandrayaan missions so what you see in the center is one of the sensors that flew on the chandrayaan missions as well and uh, in extension we are also working uh, as this row uh, is was working with uh, nisar uh, with uh, with nasa on developing sar, SAR satellites uh, so on so the the progress the development hasn't stopped it is just become multifold and quite interesting in terms of what is being done in the country now that is on the technological collaboration in terms of a com commercial collaboration uh, isro set a record uh, a couple of years ago where they launched close to uh, more than 100 satellites in a single launch and this was made possible uh, uh, with the extensive expertise that we have in the country uh, where multiple uh, organizations from across the world are regularly launching satellites on uh, isro's launch vehicles now how has this been made possible we have a very very extensive ecosystem of about uh, close to 500 uh, companies across the country serving the needs of the indian space program so a snapshot of what is uh, being done currently is uh, what's uh, put on the slide as well so it's it's quite uh, interesting to see that even as a government organization how they are very closely working with the ecosystem enabling it building it and uh, bringing cutting edge technology to the country now having taken stock of this uh multiple uh, foreign companies as well are uh, looking at the potential of the indian uh, space ecosystem market and are uh, developing uh, and uh, setting up offices inside the country uh, to capitalize and uh, expand their uh, market capabilities so a snapshot of uh, a very uh, multiple common names like lockheed and airbus and boeing are what uh, you are uh, seeing here now the major companies are done the foreign agencies are done but startups are not left behind the last decade has seen an, a huge growth in terms of uh, startups moving into the space sector uh, what we see here is how startups are uh, playing uh, a, a very good role in multiple segments related to space development a good number of them are building their own launch vehicles uh, um, what you can see is skyroot agnikul and velatrix Uh, and a good number of them are working on the space segment building uh, small satellite and satellite technologies uh, to serve the needs of the upcoming market what's also not left behind is the ground segment where multiple companies have started their foray towards it and uh, establishing and providing services in these angles now this is on the upstream side of uh, what is possible in the space ecosystem when we move to the downstream in terms of education and also application we also see a myriad of companies uh, established in the last uh, decade this is greatly increase the awareness uh, especially the space education startups where uh, they have moved towards outreach a special mention would be the platform that we are on right now uh, along with uh, ssr sserd uh, where uh, they have they have done a very impressive work in terms of taking space to the masses making them understand making them aware of what is happening in the country this is quite interesting in terms of uh, making sure the technology reaches the knowledge reaches the ma masses and a lot more inclusive development ha happens in the country now um this is a, a generic snapshot of what's uh, available in, in 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 addition to this there is a good number of companies that are uh, coming up uh, every year so what we are going to just run through is the kind of startups that are aware, uh, that are in the market right now and how it is paving the way uh, to the future of the current indian ecosystems growth so to begin with um, through our space itself we work in all the three segments the space launch and the ground segments where we build uh, small satellite technologies design missions on the launch segment side of things we build uh, satellite deployers 
And on the ground segment side of things, we provide infrastructure and related services. Uh, we've also been uh, closely uh, working on how uh, to support the Indian space uh, program as well, uh, of which we will discuss uh, a bit later. Um, a, a company of note, uh, next thing would be Skyroot Aerospace, who have been building uh, launch vehicles. And uh, in fact, uh, they, will, they are the first company which has tested their first uh, stage of the rocket uh, successfully recently. Um, the second uh, would be uh, Bellatrix Aerospace. Uh, they are also building propulsion systems for uh, satellite and launch systems. Uh, along with Bellatrix, Skyroot and Dhruva, uh, these uh, three startups won the National Space. Uh, National Startup Awards uh, a couple of days ago uh, in the space category itself. And then uh, we have Agnikul. Uh, this is a Chennai-based startup which is also developing uh, launch uh, vehicles. Uh, they recently signed an agreement uh, with uh, uh, Alaskan, Alaskan Spaceport for developing and launching uh, and testing these uh, space vehicles as well. Uh, moving on to uh, back back to the satellite side of things, we have satellites, uh, which is uh, India's uh, the the only company that has launched a satellite from both India and abroad, um, uh, being an Indian company themselves. Uh, in addition, uh, we have Pixel. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, startup right here who uh, raised uh, five million dollars uh, early this year, and uh, they are they are an Earth observation based company providing. Uh, uh, building hyperspectral uh, cons uh, imaging constellations uh, for serving the needs on the ground. Then uh, uh, you have Astro, which is a satellite communication uh, company serving, uh, providing solutions in car, QV, and W bands. Uh, th this is a very interesting technology in terms of how uh, they are looking at high throughput spacecraft and probably providing uh, broadband uh, solutions uh, based on that. Uh, and then um, moving away from satellites and uh, pure, purely in terms of Earth observation, communication, and launch vehicles, we have uh, the Gantra. The point to note is how the, the current scenario of looking at constellation of satellites and multiple uh, launch vehicles, uh, final stages being on orbit. Uh, space situational awareness has taken a very uh, interesting uh, uh, a point of uh, interest in the last uh, couple of uh, years. And the Gantra aims to solve this problem. Uh, using their solutions and, uh, and and we have one such startup as well uh, in the country. Um, and, and then we have Azesta Aerospace who are uh, who have established uh, extensive facilities to manufacture small satellites in the range of 50 and 150 kilograms and they have established a joint venture with Berlin Space Technologies based out of Germany. Currently they are based out of uh, Ahmedabad. Now, uh, now that the upstream companies are done, uh, done we are looking at a downstream company here, which is Satya. Uh, they provide uh, data intelligence and uh, uh, ground-based uh, solutions based on Earth, Earth imaging, uh, Earth, Earth imagery or remote, remote sensing imagery. Uh, this this is uh, quite different in terms of um, when we when we look at it as a downstream and an upstream company. So down, uh, downstream companies are dealing with the data that's coming out of spacecraft and what kind of intelligence we can derive from them and then provide solutions based on that. Uh, then we have a Bangalore-based startup uh, which is developing communication subsystems and payload. Uh, and uh, a slight deviation uh, or, or rather um, a very uh, advanced technology company here would be uh, Nopo Technologies. They are uh, building high PCO uh, carbon nanotubes which could possibly be used for uh, various uh, solutions on the spacecraft side of things or the rocket side of things. Uh, it's, it's interesting uh, to see the wide variety of companies that's come in, into the foray in the Indian ecosystem. Uh, a point of note here would be uh, in terms of how the Indian launch vehicles have themselves evolved, wherein uh, the final uh, the, or the last stage of the PS, uh, PSLB is currently uh, being researched on uh, where they are being repurposed to use it as an on-orbit uh, platform. This paves way to a very interesting uh, uh, access to space, a faster access to space and performing uh, a lot of microgravity experiments at a, a easier way uh, from, from the launch vehicle itself. Usually, usually the final stage uh, ends up being debris and they are being repurposed to be on-orbit laboratories. Now, what is possible in terms of microgravity research itself? 
one one uh, upcoming or ongoing research is in terms of pharma pharma pharmaceutical research and drug development uh, this could anywhere between uh, understanding uh, how antibiotics work how uh, bacteriophages work uh, or uh, moving towards uh, strategized medicine or uh, understanding how uh, organs work so what's also interesting is to look at these uh, as a, an example would be these miniaturized labs themselves uh, these are these fit into the size of your hand but also can replicate functions of a specific organ of your body and when these experiments are done in a microgravity environment which is basically space uh, could accelerate uh, drug development and drug discovery and this is an exciting field of research that's up and coming uh, which uh, is which might be enabled uh, be, be it on the ps4 platform or other platforms coming up and uh, on that note uh, I would like to mention uh, more information on this is something that uh, uh, would be available at an upcoming conference in the next coming days on 14th of October. Uh, Drua Space, along with its partners, uh, we are having a webinar uh, on transforming microgravity research from India. So, wherein um, a pharmaceutical company and uh, us, we are coming together to provide these services and enabling microgravity research at a much uh, faster pace in in the country. So. Uh, so what, what we have seen is a very huge growth in terms of what's happened uh, over the last decades in terms of ISRO's development, be it in terms of their spacecrafts, their launch vehicles, and how the launch vehicles final stage is being repurposed. What's also of interest to note is how the Gaganyan program has expa expanded uh, recently, where um, apart from having a milestone as having man manned missions in the next uh, year or two, uh, the Space Research Organization has also opened its door in the name of an announcement of opportunity where they invited proposals from multiple academic institutions across the country to participate in the manned mission. Uh, in fact, uh, we, uh, Drua has collaborated along with uh, three uh, educational institutions and over 200 applications have been received by ISRO. So what's, what's of very interest for the academic uh, sector, be it in terms of students, uh, would be to primarily focus on this, probably look into opportunities in this direction and uh, reach out and try and participate in these uh, programs as the country's, country, the startups and the economy is opening up to space research in the country. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's uh, the end of my presentation. Uh, yeah, great, sir. Thank you for that valuable session. And uh, it was really great throughout the PPT. And uh, we have some questions, and uh, we'll be taking it one by one. So uh, we have a first question Do all the Indian space start startups get help from ISRO? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, do all the Indian space startups get help from ISRO? Um, so ISRO has always been supportive, uh, right? So uh, we started our journey almost a decade ago as students building small satellites, uh, nano satellites along with ISRO. So right from then on, uh, ISRO has always been available in terms of technical support, providing the necessary uh, uh, guidance in terms of developing our systems. So uh, yeah, so I, I'm I'm pretty sure uh, all the other startups would also reflect our view on this in terms of how uh, extremely supportive in in uh, understanding and um, opening the system for us, giving access to the expertise uh, in the country as well. Great. Uh, we have our next one. Uh, which sector in space industry needs to be boom up more to improve? To improve our country's economy actually um, so almost all of the sectors are uh, technically interrelated so once you you know have an advanced spacecraft and then develop it you would need the relevant ground stations coming up in that aspect so what what is more of what, what's a more relevant question would be to look at what needs to be improved or how we can use these satellite technologies to, be, to serve better solutions on the ground. So if we look at it that direction, we just find the necessary 
problem statements and try solving those. That would serve the needs of the society a lot more than uh, seeing what needs to be improved as such. Okay. Uh, we have our next uh, question. Um, with the orbital debris management being a hot topic of discussion, what is your take on it? For companies um idea so okay. in india's party to the outer uh space treaty uh where it is stipulated in terms of how uh soon we need to bring um any object that we put in space so that we have responsible use of space in the country as as a responsible uh um citizen or you know an operating company as such uh in that direction uh the, the immediate take on it would be that we all strive to make sure there is there is a necessity necessary uh, technologies on your spacecraft to be orbited on time. And uh, I think the follow up question is uh, they're looking for what is the take on a company idea. Space situational awareness has uh, def definitely taken a point of interest in the last decade. Um, I did mention uh, a startup that's already working on such technologies. So this is definitely the need of the art, and it is imperative uh, that we all, uh, as a community. Uh, take heed of it and take heed of it and serve towards it. Great. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, what is India's role in microgravity research? So, microgravity research, as such, uh, is not necessarily limited to a certain domain. Uh, a, an example that was spoken was about the pharmaceutical sector, but in addition, uh, microgravity research is very vital in terms of um, let's say studying fluid structure interactions, material development, and so on. Uh, in terms of uh, India's role, uh, a lot of ground research that is being done on can be augmented uh, by having easier access to space. In terms of India's role, uh, ISRO is currently repurposing the PSLV's fourth stage, which would be a game changer in terms of providing access to space, bringing um, a, a, a non-space researcher or a, 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 a pure scientist in terms of working on fundamental sciences, bringing these experiments to space. So that is that that is a, a very interesting role uh, that we would be playing in the upcoming years. And in addition to that, there are multiple launch vehicle companies coming as well, which means this could actually pave way to more number of platforms. And in and and in in the roadmap of building our uh, human spaceflight capability. We are also looking at establishing a space station as part of the Indian space program. This uh, would be the, one of the biggest orbital platforms that could be possible that could enable a wide variety of microgravity experiments enabled from uh, the Indian Indian uh, ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we have this. Uh, I don't think it's relevant or not. Uh, but uh, how is microgravity related to COVID? Um, it is uh, interestingly quite relevant. Uh, relevant. So okay. let's take a step back. When I mentioned, uh, I did mention about pharmaceutical studies, right? So how, when you look at drug development and how uh, these things are done on ground, the usual timeline of uh, realization of these experiments is uh, understanding how protein crystallization work, how uh, a drug and a certain uh, target pathogen uh, interacts with each other. These things take a good amount of time. We're talking anywhere between three to 10 years in terms of understanding how human interaction happens with these. Now, this specific research can be accelerated when you have uh, microgravity access or space, uh, the research being done in space itself. How is that the effect of gravity doesn't really uh, affects a lot in terms of how the molecules behave on ground. And when you put them in space, there's a lot more freedom in terms of how they behave. This also means that we have a better understanding uh, get to understand the behavior of these systems a lot faster uh, in space. So um, I, I'm I'm not necessarily a direct expert on this uh, specific pharmaceutical uh, topic, but what I would imagine is it could possibly pay way towards developing these uh, understanding how uh, these systems work, how the pathogens work, and how potential drugs could possibly impact and uh, cure the disease faster or uh, a necessary vaccine could be developed faster. Now, th these are um, um, a, a top level understanding of how or what are the possibilities in terms of going towards the current situation and using microgravity to address these uh, these uh, problems. Okay, great. And uh, can Indian startup companies launch their own satellites if they found a better way? 
Uh, can you please repeat that? Yeah, sure. Uh, the question is, can Indian startup companies launch their own satellites if they found a better way? Indian companies can definitely launch their own satellites, but I really don't understand what you mean by a better way. Um, what what we are what uh, we and other companies are doing are uh, quite interesting in terms of how we do we follow the necessary uh, protocols and standards and uh, the requirements in terms of how a spacecraft should work in space. So yeah, that's that's uh, that would be the long and short of it. Okay, cool. And uh, talking about Dhruva space, what are your future um, plans? Um, so we, um, as a company, are involved in all the three segments, as I mentioned. So not just building spacecrafts, but also building ground segments and enabling technologies like deployers uh, and so on. Uh, what we strive to be is we, we don't build platforms for a specific, uh, a very focused application. We are, we are an application agnostic uh, small satellite developer. So in that angle, what we want to do is work with the existing Indian ecosystem, which has been supporting the space uh, uh, research in the country over the last five, six decades, and then build solutions for the rest of the world. So what we want to do is like build in India and be Dhruva for the globe, Dhruva for the world is, is how we are looking at in the future. Okay. Uh, let's move on to our next question. Uh, can you please tell us more about the advancement in proportional system technology in India? Yes, um, a good number of companies. Yes, uh, the current so far, uh, ISRO has developed uh, immense capability in, in terms of their propulsion systems itself. And moving towards startups, we have um, the systems themselves being 3D printed. That's one part of it. But purely from the propulsion side of things, um, there, there's a lot of development in terms of developing green propulsions, which are a lot more eco-friendly uh, in terms of uh, how they are. And then there are companies that are developing electric propulsion systems as well, uh, which would serve the small satellite side of uh, requirements as well. So in, in that sense, there, there's a lot of advanced uh, development in, in happening. One in the non-traditional, uh, non-chemical electrical propulsion side of things. And the other would be towards a green propellant side of things, which leads to a sustainable uh, pathway in terms of how we handle propulsion systems. Okay, great. So uh, I think uh, we are up on time and uh, we will wrap up this keynote on the, this last question. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, sir, for accepting our invitation to talk and to be part of this uh, uh, World Space Week celebration, and uh, I thank you uh, from the whole SSCRD team that you joined us and uh, share your knowledge in, on that on this topic. Thank you, Sharia. Thanks a lot for this. Sure. Yeah. So uh, that was our last keynote on this World Space Week program uh, by Mr. Vishal, sir. And uh, there's an announcement, uh, an important announcement. I am making it again. And uh, so we have coming up with our new courses launching for school kids above fourth standard. And uh, it is on various topics like life beyond Earth, space maths at beginner and advanced both levels, rocketry and space exploration. And uh, their content is updated on our website. That is www.ssrd.org. Uh, you can check that out. Don't miss it. And uh, now I would like to invite uh, one of the co-founders and CEO of our organization, Ms. Nikita, to share some words on this whole World Space Week program. Can I have you on screen, Nikita? Hi. Hi. Hello, Nikita. Okay, uh, am I audible, Nikita? You are, and am I? Yeah, yeah, you are clearly audible and visible. 
Awesome. And uh, we still have Vishal here. So Vishal, I would like to thank you so much for giving us the overview of the whole Indian ecosystem or space ecosystem we have. So thank you very much uh, for that. And to the audience, if you all are waiting to know about the winners, you will need to wait until the end of this whole uh, one hour. Um, so kindly wait. I have a screen to share. Yeah, you can. The screen is all yours. You can take over. Great. Give me a minute. Uh, not a minute, less than that. So um, I hope all the audience have been uh, really liking the program and we, we see the kind of encouragement you all are showing by joining like way too early to the program and waiting for the program and in, you know interacting and all the all the all the things it's it's been uh, amazing right and uh, i i thought let me just show you all or kind of run through what we have uh, done so far in these many days so that so that we know, OK, it's kind of revision, in fact. Okay, So um, I'd like to share my screen. Give me a second. Meanwhile, I was also um, going to announce that we have now we, we have one of the amazing uh, announcement as well today uh, because like a lot of interns uh, kind of do a lot of work today we thought we should uh, share one of the work so since we have the team already here uh, let's do that first and then take an overview of what happened through uh, World Space Week. In, in you know in this whole one week and what kind of effort the whole team put and everything so i would uh, like to call upon sujay to share a few words first about the internship and this particular team which has done uh, the internship work or particular project and then we also have the team members of this, team, of this particular project so they would also take some time in explaining what is that they have come up with and how is this particular work of theirs going to help the rest of the students right so we will have that first and then let's come back to my so jay please take over okay In fact, so we also call yeah. this or want to tell this particular, uh, particular time as the launch of this particular website. So uh, it's a big thing for a whole SSCRD team as well as this small team which has worked on this project. So uh, yeah, we've been waiting to launch this particular portal. Um, yeah, I want Sujay and the team to share more details on that. Okay. Um, so am I audible first of all? Yeah, okay. Um, so when we started SSCRD, we always wanted the students to have. Um, first of all, good evening, everyone. So um, yeah, so I hope all of you are uh, enjoying all the programs. Uh, you have learned something new this, uh, you know, this last one week when we had various programs about World Space Week, and you learned a lot about satellites. Uh, now coming back to the topic. Um, so when uh, we started SSCRD a couple of years back, our intention was again to help the students do things in a practical way and learn something in a practical way and uh, we've been doing a lot of internship where the college student comes and they learn something they build something and uh, uh, so that you know they'll have a practical experience so that that has always been our motto so that uh, students can build something and learn so um, when all the lockdown happened we thought okay let's do something for the college students as well because we've been concentrating lately too much on school students and uh, so we wanted to do something for the college students that's how we uh, we started our uh, internship and project division um, 
and uh, we thought okay let's do it online so we had uh, like right now the fourth batch is going to start tomorrow so that is 11th so we will we'll have our fourth batch is starting tomorrow usually we have uh, every month we usually get around 500 plus applications and out of which we take a uh, handful of students like uh, on various topic we usually have five to six topics which the students will be working on for six weeks and uh, the th- second batch they had uh, an interesting topic rather i would say because that this is something which i wanted to do for a long time and uh, i was very insistent on okay let let's do this this time because i i really wanted to do it and uh, that was nothing but educational tools like for students they can go and learn something new so that was uh, the main motto or that was the actual topic which we had given to this particular team okay you build something which they well the students like they can come and learn something which they didn't know or help them to learn something so that is how this whole project started and whatever the team have their team name is called astra so i want to welcome rupam and uh, his team um rupam can i have you oh, okay yeah great so i have them here on the screen uh, so they were the people behind this particular project we have uh, a wonderful website where you can uh, you know learn a lot of things about astronomy so they like astronomy and astrophysics very much uh, a particular area where students will be more interested and uh, again the so uh, the we were most like we were very happy that they came up with this particular plan and they wanted to do this website okay so before uh, Ruben, one one second. I'll I'll just give it to you so you can explain them in detail. What what is this and how it works and all those things. Okay. So uh, before we start, so all the college students who are there on the call who are going to watch it later. So we have our online internship uh, next batch application running. So uh, you can go and apply in our website. Go to sscrd.org and uh, find that internship uh, tab and go find out all the uh, topics which are listed. Also. whatever all the previous teams i have done and all those things are there like right? so you can go there read their reports find what they are doing each team has their own website so you can actually go read about what ever they have done so you can uh, find out more so rupam do you want me to uh, you know show them the website and then you want to explain or you want to explain then uh, you want to show them the website or you want to play the video how do you want to do it you're on mute i think uh, i can't hear you Uh, Rupam, I think you are on mute. No, I I can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Can you remove okay. your headphones? Just remove your headphone and just uh, join back in. Can you hear me though? Mm, okay, it appears that we have some problem listening to you, Rupam. Okay, no worries, no worries. Uh, you can. you know just refresh and join in so before that i mean if you want to benet you want to add anything or you want to start off then you can go ahead and then we will continue oh yeah sure uh, am i audible can you yeah, hear yeah. me okay yes, yeah sir. sure uh yeah so rupam was going to give the introduction so um i think he's there okay he's not okay no. yeah so first we thought of having like a small little introductory session and then we would play the video and then we'd go to the website okay, okay. so um since he's not able to connect i will just run through uh, his brief introduction so we came up with rupam, this website one second benet i let me just rupam what you can do is uh, just remove your headphone from the jack refresh your page and try to join back in you should see that green color bar should go up when you talk okay that's okay. good yeah so i think in the meantime i can show the video instead that would be better right until rupam okay. show let yeah, me sure. show you want me to play it now Oh, you have the video? Yeah, yeah, I do have. It. Okay, yeah, sure. You could play the video. Thank you.
Am I audible now? Yeah. Yes, you are. Thank God. <laughs> so as you as you have just seen the video, it was the work made by us. Uh, so we, we were just a very small team uh, of just six people and almost uh, 2000 kilometers apart sitting from each other uh, from various parts of India, including Gujarat, West Bengal and Kerala as well, Goa as well. Uh, so it was, uh, I, we thought it was going to be hectic, uh, but it went out really smooth and all the cooperations made by the team and the efforts made by the team were awesome. And everyone was perfect in their fields and had immense knowledge. And so we were able to put this up together. Uh, so our aim was to uh, introduce astrophysics to everyone uh, so that everyone get a glimpse of what astrophysics is. So uh, instead of directly dipping into astrophysics, we thought that it is quite a broad topic. So why don't we just uh, begin with simpler topics which uh, we studied in daily life, say in class 11 and 12 or in colleges as well, and how they're included in astrophysics. So we thought of beginning by including theories as well as little bit of calculations in the form of life calculator. So my friend Bennett, uh, after a few minutes, he'll just give you a live demo of our website. So what we have made. And I would also want to say that this project has a huge future implementations as well. We are thinking of adding games as well. Uh, who doesn't like to play games and learning by playing games is awesome as well. So there are huge future implementations ahead as I see. And yeah, I pass on to Bennett and he will give a loud live demo of our website. Yeah, thank you, Rupa. Yeah, so I think I can share my screen, right? So we can run through the website. Okay, is the screen shared? Yes. Okay, sure. So uh, first of all, good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to the stream. So this is our homepage. You are greeted by a spiral galaxy uh, with, with our uh, logo, in fact. Uh, seemingly endless calculations, then you should try Aster. So as you scroll down, you're given a brief introduction to what the website is. You are also introduced to its explanations and its uh, illustrations of whatever the topics we've done. And also it shows a snapshot of our calculators. So now going to the uh, going to the computations. So right now we have 26 different uh, astrophysics topics that we came up with, uh, ranging from escape velocity to Jean's law to moment of inertia, quarks, terminal velocity, and even Young's modulus. So I'll give you a brief uh, introduction to how you could actually use this. So I've chosen gravitation potential energy. So over here, uh, you're able like, to see a brief explanation of a potential energy and a picture uh, representing what it actually means and how you can calculate. So here is its calculator. Now let's say I give a mass of maybe 180 kilograms and it's present at a height of let's say 100 meters enter and you will get the value of your potential energy just like that uh, this removes all the other computations so let's say we go for my favorite the Schwarzschild radius so again you have a brief explanation of what the Schwarzschild radius is and over here we have the mass in terms of solar mass so this was in fact our internship question uh, if the if our sun was 10 times its current mass what would be its Schwarzschild radius so our calculation ran in pages, but over here, just click enter and it gives you the source chart radius. And this is how all the other 26 topics go for the calculator. And we also are looking to expand this, obviously, so it will become more useful and helpful. And this concludes our live demo. I just want to run through the internship we had. Sujay, should I go? So in the beginning, we, we are the batch two of internship uh, in SSCRD, uh, which ran through the this all uh, COVID-19 period. And uh, it was uh, generally SSCRD holds internship uh, in person, but this time it was virtual. So it was new for us as well and for them as well. So we, we all did a great job. So in the beginning, there were many students and among them, we six, to, uh, six of us were grouped together to form this educational tool 
uh, we were uh, we are given immense resources and all the things and required to build this uh, and the trainings as well the mentors were awesome to build this website together and so in the beginning we really didn't knew each other we were all uh, and we didn't had all the prerequisites as well so they worked great over there supporting us so we are six people completely unknown to each other suddenly one day we got into the group we in, got into a group and from there the journey started so the, the it was a four uh, it was a six week internship the first two weeks uh, went completely uh, doing all wrong things means uh, we were unable to choose our topics uh, just enjoying the internship for the first two weeks uh, the real work started from the third week there was a push from the society uh, team that we need to uh, fast things up otherwise we wouldn't be able to make up the things in proper time uh, so I think it was necessary for forming a great uh, project like this uh, to come up with a complete project. And after that, uh, all of the members just uh, did a great job. Uh, so all of the members are not here. So I, I just want to take the names of them. Uh, it's me, Rupam Karmakar. With me presenting is Bennett. We have Jishnu. We have Zubia Moriswala. We have Ganga. And we have Uma. So these are the six people in our team. And overall, we did. We all did give enough efforts to pull this up, and I think in the future we want to continue the project and, yeah, expand it till we can. And we we would, we think that you would enjoy. We then enjoy the website and uh, go on with the websites, and we li we'd like to interact with you in the future as well. Thank you. Uh, sorry to interrupt today you're on mute yeah so you're on mute the entire time okay so <laughs> okay that was that was my mistake so sorry so anyways uh so both of you thank you so much uh that's what i was coming uh and telling you so both of you thank you so much for uh, doing the presentation and uh, the wonderful works uh, you have done and uh, everyone who are uh, watching this, uh, you can go to our website, check out uh, what all the previous teams have done. We'll be updating with their work and uh, their other friends' work uh, in this uh, Sunday. So you can definitely go check it out. There's a lot of wonderful works which uh, everyone has put up. So uh, all the reports and everything is available for download. You can read it. Uh, there are the teams which have done in astrophysics, rocketry, and all those various topics. So definitely go check it out. Okay, and thank you, Rubam and Bennett, uh, for coming and explaining and talking about the internship and work, the work you have done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Tejas, uh, do you want to take over? Or uh, who want to go? Nikita? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Sujay. Uh, thank you, Team Astra, for. Uh, you know, uh, developing such wonderful tool. I hope uh, all of all of the students who are watching this particular website, they would go out there to the www.sserd.org website, and from there they'll be accessing the Astra tool. It, it's really handy, and these people they have done such fantabulous work. I can't stress enough. Now, without further ado, I call upon uh, Miss Nikita on the screen to share a few words about how the overall celebrations went for, for a week-long celebration. I mean, there were keynotes, workshops, and also uh, many competitions happen, happening simultaneously. Uh, Ms. Nikita, the screen is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tejas. And I'm so sorry to say that I don't have slides. But... Uh, but yes, I, I think everything is in my brain. And so basically what I wanted to share was um, like when we 
I mean, World Space Week is not something new that we at SSID has been doing. Like we've been doing since 2017. 2017, it's the first year for us. And what we did was we just had a small team here and uh, we planned to have one of the talk with the number like within ourselves and then there were a few competitions telling you know there was poster competition there was uh, essay writing competition and then there was um, video making competition so every year there is a theme that world space week association comes in with and we make everyone work on that particular theme now uh, 2018 was one of the big year i can say for ssrd particularly for world space week because uh, that year we had almost uh, 100 volunteers, like 100 volunteers to go and do the programs and the reach out was like a lot because every volunteer was supposed to go and teach in a particular school. And we had the theme of that year as uh, the how space industry is growing or what's happening with the space technology. So yeah, the team literally went to uh, like the schools where they, they studied, the school which were pretty close to themselves and they went and taught. And that's one of the best year because not only volunteers went and did, we also had amazing speakers for that year. It was uh, Dr. Miles Swami and Adarai. At the same time, we also had the former scientific secretary, um, Keshav Murthy, sir, with us. And it was it was amazing that particular year because we also had field trips. As in, we at SSCRD call it space trek. We went for um, so and we also went for team Dust. we also went for HAL aerospace museum so it was wonderful because we had again students signing up for many programs and competitions and talks and that seven days was so packed up and it was all by volunteers amazing that year was um then previous year was something special because we had one guest really had one guest guest but guess how many places we visited to and how many students we touched upon and also if you have been following SSCRD you should also be knowing by now who that guest was okay uh, so I'm gonna say that uh, the guest was uh, Gabe Mr. Gabe he was the uh, former engineer at NASA he visited India and he visited so many schools and institutions and every institute we went when he gave talk, we had average of 200 to 250 students. I can say average of yeah, two to 250 students every place. And he was here for 10 days and every day we used to visit minimum of two institutions or two places. And there was a day I remember he spoke four times which means we 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 had to interact with four different set of audience so world space week 2019 had its own uh i can say vibes with 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 all the strong vibes that gabe brought into uh, all these institutions i mean the students were so inspired and everything now let's come back to 2020. You know, this year was very hard for everyone and um, we had to do everything online. And yes, uh, we did it. Like we did it in, in another beautiful way. In, and I think again, it's, it's, it's because of volunteers, right? We had uh, 12 keynotes and which means 12 keynote speakers from various organization to to list few of them i can list all of them but yes i think it's good i list all of them i will list it at the end but yes we had 12 keynotes we we had four workshops and we had six competitions so all these things were simultaneously running throughout these seven days and again 
guess how many students were part of it let me not tell students but guess how many audience were there to take part in all these small small programs or together if you are looking at somewhere in hundreds no the answer is no we had 5000 audience in fact more than that but we can say with the with the, all the students are taking part in different programs and on average what we're trying to say is we had 5000 uh, participants who were watching every day the keynotes who were taking part in the competitions who were taking part in the workshops yes there were 5000 uh, students or let's say audience and, and again guess what nowadays uh, i as i was telling you the fact that we all have gone online uh, we started reaching out to more and more students and not just in india outside india as well i mean i can say this is one of the way the satellites have improved all our life isn't it like we were so limited to indians and now all our programs are viewed by someone outside the country as well and that's that's something that makes us feel and particularly the theme of this year right it it has it has improved the way ssri works and we are so happy for it um i want to tell this the previous uh, program we had in the month of september which is called ssri outreach program on behalf of the third year um, anniversary or third anniversary of ssid we had 15000 students joining in from almost uh, 49 countries and this time we checked in how many uh, like you know when when anyone joins to our program we actually collect the location and we realized that in fact i had the map but i'm unable to show but if uh, so jay can put it on the banners and also make it come on the screen that would be amazing uh, if possible otherwise not a problem uh, yeah so we were looking into all those data and we found that more than 60 countries took part this time like you can look out, you can check it out i know you can't see me but yes you can see this particular screen where the uh, participants joined in from for this particular uh, world space week program organized by ssrd so this is one of the uh, milestone that we have reached like we are reaching out more and more countries or like i i, I would like to say more and more st students or audience from the countries where probably they wouldn't have got chance to be part of such kind of program so yeah in that we had to reach out to more and more students or more and more people in fact because this time this world space week we did not target only the students we targeted the 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 common public as well because that's how our topics were our topics were on remote sensing our topics were on climate environment um our topics were based on what challenges we all are facing at the same time we also had our few of the topics which were concerned or concentrating on astronomy and astrophysics amazing kind of topics we had by amazing professionals in fact you all can access all these programs it's all recorded and you can any time go and watch if you have missed any of them on wsw2020.ssrd.org you can you can access it any time from that particular portal and i would like to thank all these companies the organizations who extended their support for making this particular program successful to start off with we had geospatial today and then the second day um, okay i i don't want to go in an order but yes let me list down all the companies we had uh, we had numerate we had satsure we had sat search we also had astrogate labs we had kava space we had isro we had two speakers from isro and very proud of it again we had speakers from indian institute of science we we had two speakers from indian institute of astrophysics and uh, um which did which one did i miss out yeah we had a young company pixel and yeah like like amazing support that we have got from everyone 
uh, I think uh, we couldn't have made with all these speakers and the companies and the organizations um, that were there. And uh, very happy to say that we also made made it to um, something like you know nowadays the programs which you see outside it's it's full of men. And I, uh, being one of the women co-founder of SSCRD, I would I would like to proudly say that we have three women speakers, and these three women speakers are in such a high level uh, designation, which should be motivating for all our audience, particularly the girl or the girls or the women audience whom we have. We had uh, Dr. Uh, Anupuni Ma'am, who is the director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics. We had uh, Abhilasha, who is the co-founder of Blue Sky Analytics. We had Devlina, who is the co-founder of Numerate. It feels so good for me. It feels really so good for me to bring in or to, like to literally introduce all these amazing people through SSCRD because we all know Elon Musk, we all know Jeff Bezos. In, in another few years, all these speakers who had for our program are going to be someone like that out of India. And we're so proud that they 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 all made it. We're so glad, we're so happy. Anyone who is watching this video who are all from the supporting team. I would like to thank each one of you. And at the same time, uh, I would also like to mention there were a few individuals who kind of helped us to make this program happen. Like we had Marcelo who joined in to take a workshop. We had uh, our own team, Tejas and Aviraj, who took a geotagging workshop. At the same time, we also had Open Cosmos uh, the team from Open Cosmos, uh, which gave a mega workshop on space mission design. I think each and every program. For the announcements of winners, I know we all made you wait for a the stage to Tejas and the team to start off with announcing the winners. And before we start announcing the winners, I want to say uh, that's more, right? If, if you have participated in any one of the competition, that's a huge thing because you learn something out of it. Now, winning, losing, it's all part of a life. There were a uh, few of them who did well, and I think those are the winners, but otherwise, you all have done amazing, and that's what I wanted to say before uh, our Tejas announced the winners. So yeah, Tejas, go, go ahead. Thank you so much, Nikita, thank you for that. Uh so I'll, I'll start announcing the winners. Before that, I have a presentation for you all to, you know, have a look at as to what happened throughout this entire week, what competitions we had. And yeah, regarding the Gu Guardian, or oh my God, like people have been sending us, uh, reaching us out everywhere, like on YouTube comment section and also on wherever we used, whenever we used to have live chats, even there, the discussion used to happen, even on Instagram, on Facebook. I mean, what, what a response. I, Really, really, I appreciate you all for such amazing response. And to start off with the presentation, yeah. I hope my screen is visible. Okay, we had amazing, you know, talks, keynotes throughout the week by various uh, speakers. I mean, they were all so eminent in their field. And I hope you all enjoyed all these key, uh, keynotes and workshops. And uh, yeah, the Star Wars. Star Wars was this was a debate competition wherein uh, this debate was like kind of unique, uh, as in like it 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 was unconventional coming to a normal convention, uh, normal traditional kind of debate. In traditional debate, you come and you take go on stage, you express either for or against, then you're done. But in in this particular debate, it was not not the case. We had to, you know, we had a prelims round wherein contestants were given a topic on uh, how satellites and astro or astronomy go hand in hand, how 
like the current issues regarding uh, uh, Stalin constellations and uh, how they, you know, photobombing many ast astro astronomical pictures. And we had many, many such topics come being discussed here on the platform. And then we shortlisted a few people. We took them on screen on a triple D platform, wherein we had group discussions. And it was very tough for us to shortlist those participants. And yeah, coming to Guardian Not, I'll be scrolling through all the clues for those of you who missed getting access to all these files. Like basically, all the Guardian Not clues, they had one particular satellite image, a uh, Morse code, or some hidden code in it for a particular location and a riddle or a clue uh, which which would uh, look which would ask you to locate for the next guardian knot file on or the clue then we used to have another picture which was a piece of a whole picture so these were all the five clues that we had and finally the final clue was to assemble all these pictures so you had all these pieces you were to assemble this and you would get something like this so uh, after getting the whole map picture we also had asked you to decrypt this particular picture. The clues for this were being shared on Instagram and Facebook as well. I don't know how how, how many of you followed there, but I, I guess most of you missed it because I, I see that you, you all were discussing there on the chat. So had you had followed us there on Instagram, you would have got the clue beforehand. Okay. So most, most of you actually did quite well. And now it's time for you know announcing the results. So without further ado, uh, I'll be going for uh, the prize winners uh, declarations. So in Star Wars, uh, we have the first place going to G Sathwek, the second place going to Bijoy Biju, and the third place going to Rohan. I mean, what the competition, like they, they all did such tremendous work. Uh, I also have to mention Tanvi and Sathwek Bikamulla and also uh, Karthik, who were who all there in the final round, who also e equally gave a tough fight to all these three contestants. It was very tough for us to come up with, you know, three particular names, uh, pinning, pinning it down. So here, here you are, we have Sathvik taking the first place, Bijoy taking, taking the second place and Rohan taking the third place. Congratulations to you all. The next event that we have is Satellite X. Uh, Satellite X basically was uh, this uh, competition wherein we gave a problem statement for uh, uh, 11th and 12th graders and under undergraduate students uh, regarding designing of a CubeSat. And we had imposed few constraints and they were to come up with a mission design uh, within four days. The time uh, limit that was given to them was four days and there were also restrictions regarding the missions. The kind of detailing these people took into in uh, you know coming up with the mission uh, planning was amazing. We had a presentation round as well for the finals wherein uh, they all explained as to what kind of approach they took in, what mat uh, what kind of data they had to grab in in order to support their claims for the or orbit, um, you know, trajectory planning and launching everything. So we here have the winners, Akansha Maskeri uh, wins the first place, Archit Latkar wins the second place, and Prachi Singh uh, wins the third place. Congratulations to you all. And we have the third contest, that is the Guardian Nod. Okay, I mean, Guardian Nord was a treasure hunt event. So most of you, I mean, all of you cracked it. So, but you know, the time is the factor. Few of you cracked it, you know, with, within a day span and few of you took all the four days to crack, crack the clue, but that's okay. As long as you enjoyed crack, you know, finding, hunting down the clues and finding the final treasure, you all are the winners. So coming to Guardian Nord, we have Vishalya, taking up the first place and Hitkavyam taking the second place and Shiva Govind Swami taking the third place. Congratulations to you all. You all cracked the Guardian Knot, which Alexander found it very tough and, you know, he chopped it off with a sword. So the Guardian Knot of satellites were decoded by these three uh, in the first. And coming to Estrella Pellet, uh, this was a poster making contest. We had this contest in two categories. One is junior and the other one is senior. So junior category was uh, for students who were below the age of 18, uh, 14 years and senior category was open for everyone who was above uh, 14 years. I mean, we, we received response from people who, who were about 27, who were about 30 as well. I mean, we, we were so happy to see that people were taking initiative, you know, designing posters and taking part in these contests. 
that that that, that was uh, that really made us very happy to look look for participation coming coming from you know the pe uh, people who are old as well so we have uh, in the junior category uh, nandana taking the first place ritima taking the second place and sai Sam samrut taking the third place congratulations to you masters of painting and amazing poses that you all have done we'll be sharing the posters uh, done by these junior little picassos there on our instagram page as well as our facebook page do check their posters out and in the senior category we have aishwarya shiva prasad we have kate uh, taking the first place keshav kumar taking the second place and ananya songkar taking the third place congratulations to you all i mean the kind of concepts that you all brought in in designing the posters within a day span amazing hats off to you all and uh, we have the uh, we had another con contest on blog writing about celestial quilts wherein we had given topics regarding how satellites improve life uh, and i mean uh, the the entries that we got in most of them they, they were very good i mean the kind of insight they were bringing in their blog writing format whether it's the way of writing the style of putting all the contents they, they were really 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 good we had tough time uh, you know shortlisting these three people and here again we have shreya suvarna taking the first place sofia martinez taking the second place and aliana rajesh taking the third place congratulations to you and we have the final contest uh, which is a space quest contest the, uh, this is what we call as pinks to light and we had this contest online before uh, which we had uh, a prelim session on quizzes platform of uh, I, the uh, kind of participation that we received on quizzes platform was also uh, you know very overwhelming and uh, actually we had asked people to register there on the platform and the codes were to be sent to the people who had registered for for this event and i mean most of you registered at the end moment and the codes weren't communicated for you all but still you you did you know ask us for the code and wh whoever asked for it we did send it to you even at the last moment and we we are so happy that you all took part in the spring slide contest and here we have have our winners aditya scoring the first place sujay v kulkarni scoring the second place and kushi rashmin purohit scoring the third place congratulations to all the winners i mean there's there's nothing to lose hope if you haven't won participation is all the winning that you need you all did a tremendous job in taking part in the world space week celebration the, you participated in an amazing event so you know come back stronger next time and so that your names come here on the spot thank you all for uh, joining here for uh, this particular uh, winner announcement session now i call upon akansha on screen to propose word of thanks akansha the screen is yours Thank you, thank you, Tejas. We are proud to announce the winners and also congratulate the participants. If your name is not in the list as one of the winners, do not get discouraged, as there are many more opportunities in the future. Such competitions are a stepping stone, and each experience helps you to learn. Hence, a positive attitude is what makes you extraordinary. I consider it as a great privilege. Thank you all the dignitaries who have witnessed it as a memorable and successful event. My words are not enough to express the gratitude. On behalf of SSCRD, I would like to thank you to our honorable and valued invited speakers who graced us with their thoughts, learnings, findings, analysis, and providing encouragement in the field of space science and technology, and most importantly, of our world space weeks theme that is satellites improve life an event of this dimension cannot happen overnight the wheels start rolling months in advance we have been fortunate enough backed by a team of very motivated volunteers i cannot thank everyone enough for the for the involvement they have shown and the willingness they have expressed to take on the completion of tasks beyond their comfort zone i thank you all the sh all the students for showing interest in this program for the whole space week october 4th to october 10th once again i thank you very much to all of you 
here with us who assembled here with us in world space week 2020 hope you enjoyed participating us as much we enjoyed conducting the event we look forward in organizing many more such events and programs this and also the about your certificates your certificates will be sent you can download them on monday evening um, on monday 10 am last but not the least i would like to conclude this program with a quote by krista space is for everybody it's not just for few people in science it's for everybody select group of astronauts that's our new frontier out there and everyone have the right to know about space now i would like to i would like to leave the screen and thank you all very much to joining us here Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Uh, okay. Uh, before we leave, I have few words, few announcements regarding uh, uh, the upcoming events in SSCRD. We have online classes going up on SSCRD website. We have uh, courses reg uh, regarding rocketry, space, space maths, life beyond Earth, and also uh, uh, space missions, space explorations. And uh, they are going to start from the end of this uh, month, and they, they are spread across the month of November. It is recommended for students about the grade of four, and also for students who are pursuing engineering and who are entering into engineering uh, careers. We have course for them related to, uh, you know, introduction to simulations and engineering analysis. So please do check out these courses. They are on the website. Thank you for joining in. Have a great day. This is Tejas KB signing off.